Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, this might just be relatively quick today. Um, I thought that um, I wanted to say one or two things about the Promise Up 4 for anybody that uh, might be tuning into these uh, little sessions here. So I did just get back the, the fourth problem set. Um, the only thing I wanted to mention was on this last one, I mean, I still had two or maybe three students. Um, not uh, not showing their work correctly for these uh, the, the the page replacement scheme. So in essence, for example, for FIFO, um, I had people still doing you know putting on one, but then uh, when zero came in, putting as as if zero was in the first frame and then one was in the second frame, just pushing pushing these down, right? And so then then they had two zero one, and then when when the new one replaced, putting at the top, but but kind of um, uh, pushing everything down there. So the the, the only point I want to make um, about that is that you know I you need to be able to if I ask okay which page is in frame two at this time in memory right you need to be able to answer that question right so you can't just say these are the pages that are currently in memory you have to know the pages and what actual physical frame they're in right. And your answer for both of those um, is not going to be correct unless you're correctly implementing the page replacement and also correctly keeping track of which frame each page um, is in right now. All right. So that, that is kind of a requirement for these uh, page replacements. So it's not just the list of pages that are currently in memory, it's the list of pages and their actual frame number, their actual physical frame that they are loaded into. And then the other thing, I, I still also had some people, uh, even though I think I've mentioned this uh, both in the previous help session and in the lecture videos, that um, um, it, it's more than a preference. You know, really, uh, if I ask for like a hit ratio or a fault ratio, um, you should give that for after memory becomes full. So you should just give, be giving me the hit ratio for um, um, when replacement decisions were made, right? That that makes more sense in terms of comparing how well does FIFO replacement do compared to LRU replacement, right? So if you include these initial six uh, references when we were just doing initial placements, just loading empty frames, that dilutes the um, comparison a bit, right? Although in this case, uh, for this particular set of questions uh, of page references that I gave you, you actually ended up with equal numbers. Um, but but yeah, you should have gotten 15 out of 28, um, both for LRU and FIFO. It's kind of the most correct thing I was looking for there because there was 28 page references after memory became full. So the first six were just page placements. After that, we had to make re replacement decisions. So um, for the 28, um, Page placements, um, we had to make replacement decisions um, um, uh, 13 times of the 28, right? Because there was 13 faults or 15 times there was a hit. Um, and, you know, the, the hit ratio or the fault ratio is a direct, is going to come about directly because of the replacement policy you're using, because that, that has a big effect on whether you're minimizing page faults or not, which is very important for the, you know, performance considerations for a memory manager in an operating system. Um, all right, anyway, so, so yeah, this is posted. Um, you can look at that. You should make certain, I mean, if you didn't get those correct, um, um, the, those page replacement schemes correct, you should make certain you understand um, why I considered your um, uh, work incorrect uh, because you probably will get some of these questions um, on the, the test four at the end of the week here. So, um, and, you know, make certain that you can do any of the others as well, you know, so not just FIFO LRU, you should, you should be able to do optimal and clock. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's the, the uh, um, basic page replacement um, um, algorithms that we talk about uh, in, in our textbook here. Um, all right, so let's move on. So that, that was really all I wanted to say. Um, let's, um, I, I was gonna say one or two more things. So, so this might be a relatively short help session here. 
Um, so, I mean, last time I, th I thought that we did cover pretty well, you know, the, the first four tasks, or I guess the first five tasks, uh, which is just finishing up some of the missing member methods for the paging system that you need to work on. Um, and I've been, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm getting a lot of questions on email. Um, uh, me and, and uh, Mr. Singh, the, the class GA, have been answering a lot of those. That's good. So I do actually see evidence of people working on these. Um, I think I've gotten almost everybody but one or two seem to have accepted the assignment for at this point, which is also good. And I also see that uh, a good four, three or four, maybe five students have gotten had pretty much completed or almost completed, got everything but the system test passing. So, um, so anyway, that's just all I'll say. It looks like people are, are making good progress. So. Um, I thought, you know, maybe I'll spend, go ahead and spend 10 minutes about uh, implementing the, the last four tasks or so uh, where you have to implement the clock page replacement scheme uh, here. So, um, in our Monday help session, I actually did a little bit of clock by hand. Uh, so I showed our clock by hand um, for our problem set four question, right? And so, you know, the, the the thing to understand about the clock page replacement is it's really a modification of the FIPO. Um, so it's actually meant to be kind of a uh, in-between scheme. So by adding a use bit of information, um, it, it makes it so that it has some characteristics of least recently used because the use bit is kind of like a timestamp. It's like a one bit timestamp. So it, it's just a bit of information about whether the page has been recently used you know, the use is one or not so recently used, the use is zero, all right? Um, yeah, and, and by the way, you know, this is a bit of an aside, but, uh, you know, a, a common variation on a clock page replacement scheme might be to use two use bits instead of one. So then you have like a, um, a two-bit timestamp that gives you four levels of usage. And so you would, in that case, you would use one, one, which is binary three, to mean it's been most recently used. And then, you know, one zero would be um, um, a little bit uh, older use than one one, followed by zero one, followed by zero zero, right? And you can pretty much do kind of a direct replacement of the clock algorithm that we have using two bits where, you know, if you have to scan, you, you'd want to scan for a zero, zero. And as you're scanning, you would just decrement the two bits by one, right? So if, if you have, uh, if the use bit is one, one, you would decrement it to one, zero. If, if you come to a use bit that's one, zero, you'd decrement to zero, one. And then, then you would stop as soon as you find a zero, zero, right? And you can imagine that I, why I started talking about this is you can imagine that, I mean, you keep doing that. You could use three use bits, four use bits, at some point, if you have enough bits, you basically, you basically end up with a full timestamp. So, so the more bits you have, the closer in performance it's going to be to uh, least recently used, right? If you have sufficiently number bits so that uh, you can basically give kind of a unique timestamp of when the page was last used, then um, you should end up having equivalent performance to least recently used, right? Um, oh, and by the way, um, um, I should maybe talk about this because I do think one of the questions I've got on the test this week uh, uses the modified version of the clock algorithm. So uh, in case it's not obvious, I mean, the, the clock page replacement algorithm is important. It, it is most operating systems uh, use some version of a clock um, algorithm for page replacement. Okay, so it gives it, it's kind of, it's a good balance between not so much overhead, but getting good performance. Right. So least recently used, um, as our textbook talks about, gives the best performance, except for optimal. So you can't really implement optimal because you have to be able to see in the future. So in a real operating system, you can't know the future of which pages are going to be referenced. So you can't ever achieve optimal. Least recently used will give the closest to optimal. Um, and then, so modified versions of clock then can approach the performance of least recently used, but without as much overhead, right? So it might not seem like a lot of overhead, but having like a full timestamp in order to figure out which page was least recently used um, and searching for that um, 
um, um, can be quite a bit of, of overhead. Um, anyway, oh, so to, to finish off my thought, I think there's a question on our test this week uh, where we use the modified version of the, the clock algorithm that's discussed in the textbook. So another very common thing besides like a use bit is to also look at, and use the modify bit um, for the, the, the frames and memory. Because if you select a page for replacement, if it hasn't been modified, you actually don't have to write it back out to secondary storage, right? Because you know uh, writing the, the values from RAM to a hard drive takes as much time as reading the values from a hard drive uh, into RAM, into memory, right? So if the page is modified or dirty, right? So, 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 you, so a common thing for memory management is you have to keep track of which pages have been modified or not. Because if you want to replace a page that's been modified, you have to save those modifications uh, back to, to, to secondary storage, right? So, so to replace a modified page takes twice as much work as to replace um, a, a page that's only been read, that, that's not modified, right? Because to, to replace a modified page, you first have to write out the, the, the modifications of that page, and then you have to read in the page, uh, the new page that you want to replace in that frame. Whereas, you know, if you want to replace um, an unmodified um, frame, um, you don't have to do that initial write. So it only takes half the time, half the work. And that, that can be significant if your secondary storage is a hard drive or something equivalent, because those are much slower to access um, than, than like physical memory, main memory, like RAM. So, so um, make certain that you understand that the um, modified version of the clock algorithm as well from our textbook. Um, so in that case, um, you know, maybe, and I should maybe bring it up here to be a little bit more concrete, but in that case, uh, the algorithm is modified to use both the use bit and the modify bit. Um, so then you do a similar kind of thing. So, so you try to first search for something whose use bit is zero and modify bit is zero. That's, that's the ideal candidate to select for replacement. So, so that means that it hasn't been used recently and it actually hasn't been modified. So I only have to do half the work. I, I can just uh, read in the new page I want to replace and, and not worry about writing out the modified page first, right? So um, if you can't find a page that's uh, zero, zero, use bit of zero, modified bit of zero, you de then do another search for a use bit of one and a mod or, sorry, a use bit of zero and a modified bit of one. So the second most desirable is something that has been used recently, but it might have been modified. So you might select that page then, um, and then you would have to first write it out before you can read in the, the new page that's replacing it. So. But yeah, um, um, that's just kind of a heads up. I think that there is a question where we use the modified um, um, version of the clock algorithm um, on our test four. So. <laughs> All right, so let, let's let's let me just talk a few things about for the assignment. Um, um, like I said, maybe just another ten minutes here, um, unless we get some people that join here and have some questions. Um, so to implement the clock, the suggestion is is that you start with the um, code in the FIFO, right? So so that that's discussed here a little bit because. Basically, to implement clock, you just need to do pretty much the same things that the FIFO does, but a little bit extra. All right. So you can start by the reset scheme. Um, so um, let's look at FIFO here first. So, so like the, the FIFO has a single um, member variable the frame pointer, right? So remember how FIFO works. We, we start with the frame pointer pointing to frame zero. And then anytime we have a, a page fault where we need to make a replacement decision, whatever the frame pointer is pointing to, that's the page that's replaced. And then we increment the frame pointer to be pointing to the next frame. So the next replacement decision would replace the, the next frame in memory, right? Circling that back around. So treating the, the frames of memory as a circular buffer, right? So if you look at the um, implementation of the reset scheme, which was the test six here, you have to implement reset scheme for the clock. 
But if you look at the FIFO uh, reset scheme, all it does is that's where it initializes the frame pointer to zero, right? So the, the suggested thing to do um, to implement task six, seven, eight, and nine is to start by, you know, uh, copying what's in FIFO. So we could copy because, because clock also needs a frame pointer that gets initialized to zero, right? So for um, clock, you could start by putting in, um, you know, by copying over the frame pointer that the, the FIFO has. Because you'll need that same thing uh, for your clock. And you could also start by um, your implementation for task six of the reset scheme of, of initializing the frame point to zero um, the same way in the um, clock no, reset scheme uh, implementation here. So let's find a reset scheme. All right. But then the other thing that you need, though, uh, that's different for clock um, is that um, the, the clock has the frame pointer, the same as FIFA, but it also has a use bit. Uh, every frame of memory has a use bit. Okay. So I have had some people, you know, struggling, uh, trying to figure this out. Um, I mean, I've gotten most people, I wouldn't say struggling, uh, but you really need to dynamically allocate an array of Booleans. Okay. So you're required to have an array of Booleans, but it, it needs to be allocated dynamically instead of statically. All right. So I'm not going to give that away. Um, hopefully pe people can figure that out from my description, but, um, if you want an example of that, um, if you look in the paging system, um, it has some things that it dynamically allocates as well. So let's look at, um, uh, just as an example, like, like the paging system keeps um, an array called memory, which are actually the physical frame. So, so these are the actual contents, which pages are in each physical frame of memory okay this is going to be an array of page numbers all right um and i know this may be a little bit confusing page number is just a um a type def for an unsigned int so you can just think of this as an array of, of integers right but we don't you know we don't declare it as as a statically declared array like that array of integers because we don't know um what the physical size of memory is going to be until we start the simulation, right? So that's one of the things that we specify um, from the command line for the simulation. So how much, how how many physical frames of memory, and that's that ends up in the memory size, right? So instead of di statically allocating it, we dynamically allocate it. So what happens if you look in um, the probably the constructor or maybe the reset scheme for uh, the paging system? Um, so let's look at the constructor. I think, I think it happens in the constructor for various reasons in the paging system. But yeah, here's here's where it does. So in the constructor, we're told what the memory size is going to be, and that ultimately is a parameter that's load that that's specified on the command line when you start up a simulation. Yeah. So if we want to simulate five physical frames of memory, the memory size will be five here, right? But then what we do is we allocate, so we use the new keyword. So when you're doing C++ code, you, you want to use new and delete to do dynamic memory allocation and dynamic memory uh, deallocation. Uh, that's what the new and the delete does. And what new does is it takes um, the type. And again, I'm using that type def, but th this is equivalent to saying that I want a new array of integer values, right? It's just the page number is eight as an alias for uh, unsigned integer actually, but, but you can think of that it just integers. Um, so, so you say, and if you want an array, I mean, you know, new, you can get just a single value, right? But if you want an array, you can then use square braces to say the number of integers you want allocated. So the, the size of the block of integers to allocate in the array. And in this case, you know, again, since we don't know memory size uh, until runtime, until the user specifies it when starting the simulation, this allows us to dynamically allocate exactly the number of integers that we need um, for the, the simulation that we're running, right? To, to simulate the, the, 
the, the number of physical frames and our memory size here, right? Uh, and then, you know, so if it's new returns a pointer to an integer or a pointer to a page number. So that's why we declared memory to be a, a pointer to a page number or a pointer to an integer, because that's what new returns, right? But after that, I mean, memory basically is a, an array. So if I wanted to put page five into frame zero, you know, and then this, you had to do this uh, in various places to complete the first uh, five tasks. Um, in different ways, you had to search uh, memory and things, but, but yeah, I mean, you can basically treat this allocated block um, as an array, right? So, so use the, the normal square brackets, uh, brackets uh, which I think of as the indexing operator to index into this array, right? As long as you're careful to only index to valid location, right? So if the memory size was five and I allocated five integers, a block of five integers, the valid indexes go from zero to the size mass one. So it's from zero to four um, are the actual valid indexes for a memory size of five here, all right? Anyway, so back to implementing the, the clock. Um, you need to have um, a similar thing, but an array of Booleans instead of an array of ints or an array of frame numbers. So you need an array of Booleans called use bit, and it does have to be called use bit. Um, um, this is another um, thing maybe I'll show or I'll um, discuss how this works here uh, in case it was a little bit of a mystery, but if you look at the, um, the <laughs> excuse me, the, the test for task six and beyond, um, you'll notice that we do things like this. Um, I'll find this so, so we can see it here. Um, we're actually, we create a simulation and we actually pull out the scheme member variable from the simulation. And then we use that, this is like a pointer to our scheme, which is the, the page replacement scheme that got created, the, the instance, like a clock page replacement scheme in, in this case for these tests, since we're testing your implementation of clock. Uh, and then we're looking into your private member variables, the frame pointer and the use bit, right? Um, So, you know, and you may ask, how do we do that? Well, you know, if you know how object-oriented programming works, um, that might look um, suspicious because we declared frame pointer and you should also declare your use bits to be private member variables. So you normally can't do things like that. If I create an instance of a clock page replacement scheme, I can't directly access the, the frame pointer if it's private and the use bit if it's private, right? Um, this is a little trick. Um, it's actually a bit of a kludge, um, just for those interested. But uh, you'll sometimes see people do this in unit testing, although a lot of people think that this is not a good thing to do. But by defining private to be public before we load clock page replacement, we effectively change it so that everything that was private um, is public. Um, um, now, right? So nothing is private anymore. So that actually breaks the encapsulation of the clock. It actually breaks the encapsulation of everything. I should, I should really um, um, only do it for clock. Um, so I should really kind of put this uh, below everything. But um, um, anyway, by doing that, that allows us to actually um, look into private things like the the frame pointer for your clock page replacement scheme and the use bit to name but anyway that, that's kind of why it has to be actually named exactly use bit right if you don't name it exactly what's expected there an array of booleans um, um your code won't compile um, because it's expecting that particular name so all right um and then um, the task seven, eight, and nine are to implement the, the, the page hit member function um, for the page replacement scheme and the um, um, make replacement decision member function. And then finally, the, um, um, what's it called? The, um, the, 
the last function to get uh, everything. Oh, um, I guess, yeah, there's no test for that one, but but to get the system test to pass, you also have to implement the final function, the, the get system status or, or whatever it is. So um, let's go back to, um, yeah, just to finish this off. So after you reset, oh, you know, um, after you add the use bits to your clock, make certain you are also initializing all those. So that's described in the thing, but but besides initializing the frame point of zero, you need to initialize all those use bits to true in anticipation of the pages being initially loaded, right? So when, when a page is first loaded into memory, um, it should have its use bit set um, to true, right? And then um, after that, for task seven, you have to implement the page hit. Now, for the FIFO, FIFO doesn't do anything for a page hit. So, so if I go back to the FIFO um, and you look at the, um, where's the page hit? Uh, the, the page hit here doesn't do anything. There's, there's nothing to copy, right? Because uh, FIFO doesn't have to know uh, if a page gets hits or not. But for clock, um, you do have to do something. Okay, so for clock, um, if you're told that the page in frame one was hit, you have to make certain that the use bit for that frame is hit, right? So you basically, you're given the frame number, um, which should be a valid index into your use bits, your use bit array. So you have to set whichever frame's use bit to be true that was hit there, right? That's all you have to do for the page hit. And then finally, to get the, the, the final, to get all the unit tests to pass, you also to get the make replacement decision to work. All right. So here, you know, if, again, if we go back to FIFO, um, this is the, the make replacement decision. And, and again, you can start with this as a starting point for your clock, right? So, um, So for make replacement decision is supposed to be returning a frame number, right? So it should return the frame number that the, the replacement scheme decides is the frame that should be selected for replacement, right? So that's what the replacement decision is about. So which physical frame of memory are we gonna select to have that page kicked out and replaced by the new page reference that just faulted, right? So the FIFO decision is very simple. Whatever the frame pointer is pointed to, that's the frame that we're going to replace. Uh, if you look at the implementation of FIFO, uh, we remember that because uh, you also have to increment so that the next time a replacement decision is asked, the, the frame pointer is pointing to the next physical frame afterwards, right? So you have to remember what the frame pointer is currently pointing to because you want to return that as a frame to replace, but you need to increment this frame pointer to the next physical frame, right? And here, um, 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 as I discussed on Monday, um, we use the modulus, um, or I, I told you to use the modulus operator. Most people that have to do things where you're treating like an array as a circular buffer, uh, so you'll see this is very common to use modulus, right? So basically what happens, like, again, let's say that we have memory size is five. So that means that the valid indexes in memory are from zero to four. So if the frame pointer is currently four, uh, if we add four plus one, it becomes five. That's an invalid index for a memory size of five, where, where the last valid index should be four, right? So what you need to do in that case is wrap it around. So if you, if you, do, if you divide by five and take the remainder, modulus is really just the remainder. So five divided by five has a remainder of zero. So it end, ends up wrapping around. Anytime the value becomes five, it, it uh, the modulus, the remainder is going to be zero, uh, dividing by the memory size, so it'll wrap the frame pointer back around to index zero. And otherwise, like like if the frame pointer is one and we increment it to two, uh, two divided by five it goes in zero times with the remainder of two. So two, the remainder is just two. And right? so it doesn't do anything except when it needs to be wrapped around if you're using the modulus operator. Right? Now for the clock though, you don't, you actually have to do something different than select the frame that the frame pointer is pointing you. You first have to scan memory to find um, 
a use bit that is zero, right? And you want to start scanning wherever the frame pointer is pointing to, right? So really, the 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 best implementation of that, um, I mean, you might have you could you could have like a temporary variable called frame to replace, but uh, this needs to you need to figure out which frame you're going to replace by doing a scan, okay? And really, this should be like a while loop, okay? So a common bug I have seen people do is do like a for loop where you start at index zero. I mean, you have to start at wherever the frame pointer is pointing to, right? So that's one absolute thing. But the other thing is, is it's really a while loop that should stop as soon as you find a frame whose use bit is false or zero, however you want to think about it. Um, you know, so I mean, it could be that the frame you're currently pointing to is has the use bit of zero. So you stop immediately. Right, and, and do pretty much the same thing as what FIFA would do, whatever what, what the frame pointer is pointing to. But it could be that the use bit uh, that the frame pointer is pointing to is true. So in that case, you need to flip it to false uh, and then increment your frame pointer um, and, and then check the next one. You need to keep doing that where you check. Um, and if the use bit is true, you want to set the use bit to false and then increment the frame pointer to the next one. Keep doing that until you find a use bit that is false. All right. And, and once you, if, if you do that correctly, then uh, afterwards you can do kind of the same thing that was shown here. So once you've got the frame pointer pointing to the first frame whose use bit is false um, or zero, then you can remember that as the one to be replaced and you can increment it um, in anticipation of the next time a replacement decision needs to be made and then return that frame to be replaced. But before you can do those things, you do have to do a search. That's what the clock is all about. Um, and um, of course, I, um, you know, I didn't mention it, but you do the the only kind of maybe possibly tricky part of that search um, is you do have to wrap the buffer around, right? So you have, you have to treat the the use bit array as a circular buffer. So. Um, if you if you get to the last frame pointer, whatever the memory size is, um, and um, its use bit is not one, you have to set its use bit zero. But you have to wrap back around to uh, uh, index zero so to the frame pointer back to uh, index zero memory and continue on from there. All right. Um, Okay, so yeah, that's really six, seven, eight. Um, there's no unit test for task nine, but in order to get the full hundred points for this assignment, um, you actually do have to implement the get scheme status, uh, which will allow the system test to pass. Okay, so um, again, just just to show you that, so so if you look at um, the the get scheme status for FIFO. Um, basically, it creates a string and returns it. So, so actually, it, it creates a string stream, streams some stuff in the string stream, um, and then returns the the that you know converts it to a regular string and returns that. Okay, that's what get scheme status is doing. So this here is basically you know if you look at the result files. So let's look at um, uh, result for using the page reference stream one for clock. Uh, with a memory size of four. Okay, so this this has a physical memory of four frames here um, uh, in the simulation, right? Uh, I should have looked at FIFO first. So um, if you look at like FIFO, um, it looks like this. So basically, this stuff here um, is coming from um, uh, so, so this information about what's in the frames currently is coming from the get scheme status. Um, so you can see that basically all we do is we have a loop that goes over all the frames from zero. Uh, th this is another thing that you had to fix uh, in this assignment here. So, so it should go over all the frames, <coughs> whatever your memory size is, right? And for each frame, it outputs, um, if, if the page number is zero, um, oh, but it outputs this is where the frame, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 comes from. So that's where um, uh, 
that's where the, the stuff comes from here. Uh, so, so this frame and the frame number is coming from this part, this output thing. Uh, and then the contents of the frame. So if, if the page number is zero oh, here, I kind of broke my own rule about not using magic numbers. So if the, the frame is an empty frame, I should run a code review on myself um, and, and ping myself. So if the page number is an empty frame, we use zero to mean empty frame. We output empty. Otherwise, we just output the, um, the page number that's in there. Right? Oh, and as a final thing, though, we also, in FIFO, we're indicating where the frame pointer is, right? So if, if the frame that we're outputting is the same as what the frame pointer is pointing to, we output this little indication that that's where the frame pointer is currently pointing, right? So, um, so you can you can basically copy this code over uh, from the uh, get scheme status because for for clock the only thing you need to do is you need to add in the use bits. Okay, so um, after you output the 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 page number um, or if it's empty. Uh, uh, which is this part here, you need an additional part that outputs the, the value of the use bit, right? And you use your use bit array to do that, right? So initially when you start a simulation, all the use bits should be set to one, uh, even though the frames are empty. So they should be all initialized to one. Uh, that's what the system tests are expecting. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the only additional thing you think. And, and I think that that's all you need to do to get the system test to pass on the, um, oops, on the, um, um but yeah try it uh, there might you might have to add something into the the test file or to the sim file or, or something um kind of like we had to do for the previous assignment uh, but yeah the main thing is getting your get the, the scheme get scheme status um to, to output the correct output for the clock so um, I think I think everything is given to you in the assignment for sim file to correctly be able to specify a five or a clock when it creates the paging system. Um, um, object so all right um i think that that was all i was going to say then um about the clock page replacement scheme so yeah hopefully um people um I, you know from my feeling so far it looks like people are doing pretty well this, this one has a bit more work to do than the previous assignment but it looks like you know quite a few people um, are already there or pretty much already there uh, even as of Wednesday here, uh, and almost everybody except for one person or two has at least accepted the assignment. So, um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, um, in the meeting there and post this as usual. So um, as usual, if you have any questions, let us know. Um, I've mentioned this before, but go ahead and if it's a question about the assignments, um, email both me and uh, Mr. Singh, our, um, our class GA, um, so that, you know, you'll get, you'll be able to get the fastest kind of response from us. So. Okay, that's it. I'll see you guys later then.